Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 2, 3, 4. Titles. This vlog comes by request from Jackie, Professor Jackie Ewart. Jackie is one of my dearest friends on planet Earth. I've known her for 25 years. Is that even possible? And she is a remarkable researcher, incredibly productive, fantastic industry and community engagement. And Jack asked me if I would talk about titles, particularly for books, book chapters, articles, and she also mentioned conference papers as well. So it's my absolute pleasure to do this. And again, it's one of those things, and Jack always does this, she always challenges me throughout our entire lives together, that this is a really important area, an undercooked area, and I wouldn't have come up with this vlog idea on my own, but wow, the research was incredibly interesting. So Jack, you rock. And it's interesting in so many ways that I didn't think of this as a vlog area because I'm completely obsessed by titles, and I've been obsessed by titles throughout my entire academic career. And I get my titles very early, in the research process and all the way through my academic career I've had one goal you had one job you had one job I see myself with titles as having one job and it's a big one I try and capture the entirety of an argument of a book or an article or a conference paper the entirety of an argument in the title so let me give you some examples here are my my first five of 19 but first five book titles Tracking the Jack, a retracing of the Antipodes, so track, Jack, Union Jack. Ladies who lunge, <laughs> celebrating difficult women. Digital hemlock, internet education and the poisoning of teaching, <laughs> classy. Uh, Liverpool of the South Seas, Perth and its popular music. And from revolution to revelation. Generation X, popular culture, popular memory. So there's just the first five. And of course I'm at over 250 articles and so forth now, and a couple appeared last week, and their titles were From Bad Apples to Zombies, Walking Dead Leadership <laughs> in the Contemporary University, still makes me laugh, and something I really love, Panic Learning, off and on the COVID campus. Now, panic learning, I'm trying to invest that as a concept and as a trope with a lot of meaning. So I've put in a title in an article uh, with colleagues and I'm very proud of that article, but the panic learning bit, I'm going to return to again and again and again. So as you can see, these titles are not just titles. They're also an argument. And I need to firstly do a couple of caveats about this. Disciplines do differ pretty radically in their attention to titling, but the goal is always the same. So again, we always go, oh, disciplines are different. Yes, but you know what? There's a singular project, and that is to use a title to cut through the digital fog. There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of books, book chapter, articles, conference proceedings, blogs, vlogs, etc. released every single day. So you have some jobs. Firstly, your research has to be found. Secondly, there has to be motivation enough for it to be read. And thirdly, there has to be juice and motivation enough to cite it. Now, each of those three variables are quite different. And let's unpick that a little bit. Think about the moment in your life, your daily life, as a researcher, when you're trying to find some stuff, some research on a topic, and you put particular terms into Google Scholar, maybe even Google, but you know your topic, you know your subject area, so you use those keywords to try and find something of interest. Okay, that's cool. But how do you differentiate between seeing something, seeing a title, and deciding to download it from the thousands of returns that you receive? Now that space between seeing and clicking, or looking and downloading, that's not a rational space. It's a triggering space, and the trigger for that decision is, as you've guessed, 
titles. So we make decisions about what we're going to read at speed. So titles give us that whoosh, that rush of information, that rush of scholarship, but also it's an affective space. It gives you an emotional interest in the scholarship. And you're making an emotional decision to decide intellectually if you're going to spend 30 minutes, an hour, some days engaging with this material. Okay, so let's do this. Recognising disciplinary differences, let's talk about 10 things for you to consider when we're engaging titles. Let's do this. One, number one, the point of a title is to attract an audience to your research. Now, titles have never been more important, and the reason for that statement is we live in an age of information obesity, and let's hope <laughs> digital dieting, and let's hope some information literacy. But that means we have to slice up and select what we're going to read with care, because there's a lot of great stuff out there. So if our search terms are nice and tight, then we cut away a lot of intellectual nonsense. But think about how you go into Google Scholar or Springer or any search engine or database. How do you decide what you're going to click and download and read? How do you decide that? And the answer is the title. Similarly, if you're interested in citations, and this has been a lot less studied, can I say, but if you're interested in citations or a colleague deciding to attend your conference proceedings when there's five parallel sessions, hundreds of gigs people could go to, why does a group of people decide I'm going to go to that particular conference session? Title. So don't aim for neutral or dull chapter titles or book titles. What I want you to do, particularly with book chapters, because that's a bit different with the disaggregation that's happening with books at the moment, you've got to aim for punch. And I mean it, punch. Your titles have got to punch out of that conference page. They've got to punch out of the contents page in a book. And that punch can exist through doing some very simple things like selecting an unusual word in the title that can emerge from even the most pedestrian of topics. And remember, titles are one of the few things as researchers that we have complete control over. We control this. So in comparison to the research itself, the title may seem very quick or easy or banal. And that's actually not the case because the title is crucial to impact and it's crucial to dissemination. It is the title that allows you to find your audience. So this means, and how important is this, the meta point of the vlog today is, when you're spending all this time on your research, that's great, that's important. But what I want you to also do is spend time thinking about who the audience for that research will be. And write that down. Start to think about what disciplines engage with my research. What theoretical approaches would enjoy this? Is it transdisciplinary? Is it postdisciplinary? What nationalities or specialisms will particularly enjoy this research? Okay, that's important. Write down who the audience might be. Then work on the words that will engage, grab that particular audience. Two. <laughs> Life lesson, this one. Sharp and short is better than long and baggy. Short and sharp titles are effective. So get rid of the bagginess. And often what bagginess is, is extra words, okay? So the average length of a title is between 10 and 20 words. Maths titles, respect to all the wonderful mathematicians out there, maths titles are real short, the shortest of, our, of what we do. Medical titles are often the longest. Okay, so the way we create succinctness is to make sure that the title captures, like a haiku, the summary of your work. So subtitles matter a lot 
because that's where you can funnel in or hone in particularly the methodology of the work which matters a lot in the applied social sciences so for example uh, new masculinity theories during the Vietnam War colon an oral history new masculinity Vietnam War oral history so do not use acronyms in the title. Now I know we're aiming for short, but if a word is important enough to use, use it in full. Clarity, brevity, nouns, cut away the adjectives. Three, now work on drafting your title through the drafting process of the article, book, chapter, book, conference, right? Okay, so an article takes months to write often, and books take years. And what I want you to think about is move the titles through the drafting process as well. I don't do this. The literature recommends it, and this has changed my life. Okay, I, I dream titles. I'm one of those people. I've like a pad behind my bed, and I sort of I dream titles. And you know, I've I've had titles for books come while I'm waiting for a train on a train platform. So I'm one of those weird people, and they often don't change. But what I've learned from this is it's cool to draft titles. Okay, you don't have to wait for like. Boo! There's the title. So what you have to do is feel comfortable putting in place a draft title. That's wicked. Then work on the rest of the paper. And this was the suggestion from the literature, and I love this. Have a title, just sort of a, a space for titles, at the end of the article, where when you get an idea about a title, you just start to pop those interesting, quirky sentences or phrases under that title. Now, these perspective titles are useful for many things. They may end up subtitles. A bit of that might be a pithy phrase you can use in a topic sentence. Tremendous. And they may become the introduction or the conclusion. Excellent. So the questions to ask when you're moving through that drafting process and you're really honing in on the best title. So what is the purpose? What are we doing here? What's the point of this article or book? What's the purpose? What are the key questions or question that is addressed and answered by this article? Three, who, what is being studied? Who, what, clear nouns. What methods are being used? Good citations through methods, that's why. And what are the results? We'll come back to results in a second. So answering these questions will point you very clearly to a good title. So. You've got to think about, this is my research at this point of my career, so it matters. And can I also say where it gets a bit crunchy is if you are co-authoring, and in many disciplines, co-authoring is the norm. Just recognise you're developing your title. You've got to bring your co-authors along with you. You know, research integrity is about everybody agreeing with what's going on. So make sure that as you're developing these pithy titles, you're explaining to your colleagues why you're making those selections so everyone agrees. That's important. Four, one of my favourite ones, four, balance wordplay and gravitas. Research shows that titles that are witty or ask an innovative question are downloaded at a higher rate. The research to the next step about the citation and reading of that research we're not clear on. But if you do something a bit pithy, a bit weird with an interesting question, it will be downloaded at a higher rate. So look, those pieces will be found, whether or not they're read or they're cited, we don't know. But having said that, an article is not read and cited if it's not downloaded. <laughs> so get people to download it first. The challenge we've got here is that irony, puns and humour don't travel well between cultures. Okay, that's a problem. So if you think you're being funny in some cultures, it's not funny and then you're in a bit of trouble. So similarly, an offensive word, <laughs> yes, a bit of swearing in the title, is not actually advised. Okay, so a bit of sweary, sweary, nah, just, yeah, nah. But then having said that, every now and again, the articles and the books that do some really productive swearing in the title are downloaded and cited. So we've got to be honest with that, but you know, that's that issue. So the problem we've got is academic research is conservative. It really, really is. And part of that conservatism, even I agree with, you must not, any of us, we must not 
over egg the results. We mustn't over claim. We mustn't say, oh, look, we've done this and look, we haven't. Because that's a that's a research misconduct, okay? So this is what you're doing and the title has got to capture that accurately. But there is a big difference, I nearly swore, there is a big difference between research misconduct and fraud and engaging, passionate and powerful presentation of ideas. Now I giggle a lot about Gravitas. I don't have a lot of Gravitas. Gravitas is the way that posh people try to shame the rest of us for not having the right accent in terms of me, epic fail mate, bring it. But look, don't let that happen. Don't let the Gravitas thing worry you too much because it is a series of class-based assumptions about academic life in the 1960s, right? And that was a long time ago. So absolutely show rigour, show academic and research integrity, full stop. But then show flair, passion and skill through your titles. And can I just do the, the obvious other thing? People go, oh, look, titles don't matter that much. Can I just make the obvious point? In a time of information obesity, a bad title can put off readers, no matter how good your research may be. The lack of a memorable title means that your research won't be found from the pack. And even if it is downloaded and saved on a hard drive, it won't be memorable enough to actually read and cite. So never let gravitas and fear get between you and a really red hot title. Go for it. And as I said, write a series of titles and alternative titles and commit to a title. Don't make sort of vague, general, oh, it's interesting. Make it tight, make it punchy. Think about your title from the perspective of the reader. That was the point we started with today. You can use comedy, but do be careful when you enact it. And also, please, be careful when you're using popular culture. And as most of you know, I am a popular cultural scholar. This is my business. Pop is what I do. And nothing looks worse. Nothing looks more try hard. Nothing looks more like I'm down with the young people than using popular culture badly. I'm trying not to laugh. Let me give you an example of using popular culture badly. Okay, here we go. An amazing study of the biomedical literature in the last 10 years has confirmed the frequency of Bob Dylan lyrics in biomed articles. I couldn't make this up, okay? And this study showed results that 135 articles titled The Times They Are Changing emerged in the biomed literature, okay? Gets worse. There are 36 titles in biomed with the title Blowing in the Wind. Biomed. I write on Bob Dylan. I called my, my article Digital Dylan because that's what it was on. And by the way, when we're doing this Biomed stuff and Bob Dylan lyrics, this happens in nature. So in nature, they have this incredible tendency to use Bob Dylan titles. Down with the young people, except the young people are now 75. So there are some shockers in titles. I'll just read you a couple of my favourites and try not to laugh. Wax on, wax off. Pubic hair grooming and potential complications. Yeah. And my second favourite is guess who's not coming to dinner? Evaluating online restaurant reservations and disease surveillance. Now we know these titles are just wrong in, in so many different ways but having said that when I found these titles, I did actually go and download and read the articles, and I really enjoyed them. So even the bad titles sort of work. So there you go. Five, make sure that there is at least one keyword in the title. Huge. Now, keywords are everything. Search engine optimization is everything. Think about the words in the title that hook out. Hook out. To keep this tip really simple, just think about it in your own research life. When you go to the keyboard, what are the keywords you put into Google Scholar in your discipline, in your field? What are the hot, hot keywords? 
Again, the nature of academic gravitas means why would you want to use a hot keyword? Are you kidding me? Use a hot keyword. So if your field is hot, then you go with that heat, right? I'm thinking about the legendary Jess. Jess is looking at the relationship between alcohol use and breast cancer. Hot, really hot. And if Jess doesn't use booze and breasts in a title, I don't know how fantastic Jess is. Jess is already using boobs, breasts, booze in titles because she's classy. And that'll allow the research to be found and also alt metrics to increase because the media will find it. So pick a discipline. What's hot? What's hot in your discipline? Carbon economy. Wow. Education leadership. My goodness me. Cancer. Cancer. Shakespeare. Dylan. Now, for the humanities and the social sciences, what I really recommend, and this is really hot in the last 10 years, particularly the last two, put a hot theorist in your title. Put a theorist in your title. They're the keywords. Six, take risks. Oh, yeah. Great titles have three characteristics. They engage a target audience. They express their content effectively. But remember the third. They reflect the style and the tone of the article or the book or the conference paper. Now the last one, get the tone, is the hardest one to do, I think. And look, that's because the time has passed. It's gone, been gone for decades, where a solid title would point to the research and it would be read. There are just simply too many academics, too many journals, too many high quality articles to hope that great research will be found. Digitisation, deterritorialisation, disintermediation, our 3Ds, thanks for playing, mean that you need to do more. And doing something innovative, like an odd word, a provocative question, or an inversion of a truth, can make an incredible difference. And I know academics tend to be risk averse. There is a focus on credibility, and look, I do get that. But there is a fine line between credibility and banality. <laughs> oh yeah. And some flair, some innovation in your work will make a difference. Now, humanities articles in particular are historically undecided. Okay, our field, that's why, you know, the H index and stuff, we have one, but it works completely differently from physics, right? Okay, and our work is historically undecided. It's read, but the citation rates tend to be different. So we have to work really hard at getting any citations at all. Therefore, titles are really everything to me and should be everything to you, the humanities crew out there. And because I always publish in open access journals, always, 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 the articles are available for any punter to read, okay? So use some courage. Come up with that great title because that title can be used on Twitter as a pointer to your research. Take risks, find some courage, tweet your research. Every single time in life when I have written that more risky title, direct, provocative, out there, people have recommended I not use it, it's paid off in citations, in feedback, in consultancies. Now this is much tougher to do with co-authors, particularly if you're dealing with a co-author who published a great deal before 2010, but try and explain to them the importance of social media, alt metrics, and how the research moves these days. Seven, old journalism rule, don't bury the lead. It is amazing how much time people spend on abstracts and how little time people spend on titles. I've never understood that. In order to engage your reader in the abstract, they've got to find the title. So put the big guns, poof, at the front. Because first impressions are all you have. Now, all of us in life think that people will love us for our personality. They will not love us for our personality. You've got to be pretty first. They might like you for your personality, but you've got to be pretty. Same thing with research. The research might be solid. It might be good research. But unless you've got a good title, people aren't going to find it. People will not seek out boring titles for the quality research. They won't get there. They won't get to that stage. Always remember these days, the scrolling finger 
is a brutal mistress. So when you're about to press send on sending that article, that book chapter, that book, that conference to an editor, to an organiser, a conference organiser, just check a few things for me. Does the title convey the purpose, the aim, the goal of the research? That's the obvious one. Avoid abbreviations, does it do that? Have we included at least one hot keyword, something that really activates a readership? Okay. Have I verified the particular guidelines of a journal? Every journal is a bit different, so make sure you fit it in with what they want from a title. And most importantly, is your most important idea right at the front? Boof. Eight. Now let's get into different disciplines a little bit. Recognise that different disciplines do have distinctive preferences for titles, but those differences are being lost. So there are basically three types of titles, okay? There is the declar declarative, to declare, declarative title that states the main findings of the research or the title, okay? So let's use an example, to declare. Single malt con consumption does not enable stress management, but sleep improves. Declarative title, okay. Descriptive title describes what the article's about, doesn't reveal the conclusions. Okay, the effects of single malt consumption on stress management. Then we've got the interrogative titles. It introduces the subject in the form of a question. So does single malt consumption enhance stress management? Question mark. Now, different disciplines do have preferences for the different types. The declarative titles are very good for emphasising the technical side of research. So methodology, ontology, very good there. Interrogative are used for literature reviews in particular, some systematic reviews, a lot of scoping reviews. Descriptive titles are the most common, they're also the most boring, but they're also the most common for journal articles. Now, different disciplines have different expectations, okay? A lot of medical journals hate the declarative title uh, where it states the findings. Can I say that, though, when you look at some of the most highly cited articles in the history of medicine, they declare right up front what their results are, so it's a very interesting paradox, that one, but we don't like it, but when you do it, it's heavily cited. Okay, in a lot of disciplines, the big findings should be front and centre, so Hitler's bunker discovered. Is Pluto a planet again? The key strategy is a strong and pithy primary title, and then the descriptive secondary title. Okay, and do recognise the value of a good subtitle. A good subtitle provides context. It particularly is useful for specifying geographical limitations or parameters, or temporal parameters, space and time. What's the space of this research? What's the time of this research? Good. All disciplines, though, share some real problems when we're engaging with titles, and all disciplines and all scholars do some really, really silly things with titles, okay? In STEM, we see formal and completely vacuous. In the humanities and social sciences, we see obscure and completely idiosyncratic, which is one of the reasons it's not cited. So all these errors, I think, come from academics trying to pretend that we're smarter than we are, okay? Title. Start with the content. Start with the results. Start with the audience. Thanks for playing. Nine. Beware of titles with regional descriptors. Now this is a challenging one for our colleagues working in regional health and regional education, which is why I wanted it here, because that's a lot of our wonderful audience. My respect to you around the world, colleagues. Now regional descriptors rarely survive refereeing or the editorial process, okay? And there is an argument, This is, and I disagree with this, but I, there is an argument that journals want articles that are read widely and regional research is not read widely. Research doesn't necessarily show that, by the way, but anyway. But it confirms, certainly for journals, it's harder to find reviewers for regional topics and for refereeing to take place. And this matters, I think, a great deal 
in regional Australia but also formerly colonised nations. And I'm seeing online, as a lot of you are, I'm sure as well, some pretty dreadful stuff, phrases, explanations emerging from editors where they're knocking back non-European and non-American authors before it even gets to refereeing because there's not enough material from Europe or the United States in the article. Okay, and I'll give you an example of this. I'm working on this at the moment. I'm writing another wonderful article with Sue Charlton on regional health. And I particularly configured a title that recognised regionality, but I inverted it through the subtitle because I stressed the importance of regional health for urban policy makers. See what I did there? Yeah. So if you've got that sort of specialist topic, and I want you to get that published, and we all do, make sure that the main title shows a wide impact, wide impact with the specificity in the subby. Okay, 10. Crucial one, make sure the title conveys the research significance. We have all sorts of words pumping out of research strategic plans at the moment. Impact, engagement, esteem. And of course for our PhD students, your focus must be on originality, must be. But for me, and this is perhaps because I'm so old, where age is significant, What's become important for me is significance. The significance of the research is perhaps the most important point we'll ever make. Why does this research matter today and into the future? The title, above all, should convey that significance. Now, one of my favourite articles that I read in preparation for this vlog had a great title. So it was about titles and it had a great title. Why do academics and PhDs carefully choose useless titles <laughs> for articles and chapters? So you can see how great that title is. Academics, who's the audience? Academic, PhDs, big group of readers, carefully choose useless titles. One word, useless, and you read it immediately. And it was a great article. And this article argued that there's almost seeming to be this professional obligation to be obscure, to convey as little as possible about the research. So make sure you have that moment. Have that moment when your research is completed. You go, right, that's great. Why is it significant? Why does it matter? And convey some of that in the title. We know that old cliche, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge research by its title. But these days we have to. We have to. Publishing houses are pumping out material at an incredible rate. We live in accelerated academy and accelerated university system. The title may be the only part of your research that the reader ever sees. So make it a good one. And remember, if the title is wrong or bland or pedestrian, your article will not be read. The time of the big publishing houses, like the Rutledges or the Sages, dominating publishing by producing catalogues, so publishing catalogues of journals and books, those days are way over. Ooh, that looks interesting. I can't remember the last time I read a, a book catalogue, and I probably read five to ten books a week, every week. So I'm a big buyer and I don't look at a catalogue. What we do is we search through Google Scholar. We search through Amazon. We look at the title and in the case of the book, we look at the cover. So in many ways now, the publisher is irrelevant. The title is the hook. So care for your titles because they are the pathway to your future readership. Thanks, Jack. I wish you love, light, and peace. Tia.